Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and the Incredible Hulk issue number one. That's right, the Hulk is great again. Well, at least he's incredible again. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. This was pretty good. Also, something I noticed that was really good about this issue, and I hope that Marvel's doing this with all of their issues for the most part, they've got the legacy number on here. I know they've been doing that for a while with a couple little things here and there, but this is the first time where I'm noticing, like, oh, this is a good thing, and genuinely, it is a good thing. I've been saying for a long time, and apparently some other people have been saying it too, because I really doubt Marvel specifically listening to me. But they're finally taking some kind of heed to the fact that it is a mess. The whole system is a mess. There's a thousand issue number one. There are more issue number ones than there are general issues of the Hulk. I'm just saying. That, that more than there are series. If you've got like 30 series, you still got a, a whole bunch more one-shots because they're... Yeah, so I'm going to move on and start talking about who made this comic book. I'm just really happy with the legacy number. <laughs> really happy to see that. Okay, so Philip Kennedy Johnson is the writer. Nick Klein on art. Matthew Wilson doing colors. Excuse me, VCs Corey Petit on letters. Uh, also, Klein does the cover art. Uh, after that, we've got, yeah, a couple of variant, a whole bunch of variant covers, actually. Oh, including a George Perez redo issue, which I'm digging. I like that. Rest in peace, my friend. Rest in peace. Um, <laughs> probably the only man who ever kissed me. <laughs> and I was I was actually pleased that he did. <laughs> uh, Stanley and Jack Kirby, of course, created the Hulk. So this issue, man, you got these uh, treasure hunters going in Iraq, and you got some body horror right off the the top. You got some body horror. This was the kind of body horror, like just my humble opinion. I think Philip Kennedy Johnson. I think this guy, a man with three names, by the way, is a serial killer. I've got nothing else to say, but I said what I had to say. Anyway, this freaking guy, the serial killer, he goes and he puts some body horror in here. The only way I could compare this for you to actually, like, get what I'm saying is go look at the original Howling movie. The first time that you see a full-on werewolf transformation, whatever you think of the rest of the movie, the graphics, the this, that, whatever, this was pre-CGI. This was all done with puppeteering. That original transformation of that werewolf was out of control. And you could, you, you were in pain watching the transformation because of the bones breaking to reshift, to go from the, this, this, this human to this pseudo canine. Oh, man. And that's what I'm seeing when I look at this. When that chick just turned her head exorcist style and you heard... Like, she broke her neck to turn around. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> you saw the little crack or whatever. That was crazy. So after the title page, you see uh, Bruce Banner running into a diner. It's called Jack's Diner. I love when they do little things. They're always, like, naming each other and whatnot. This is clearly Jack Kirby. And if it's not, screw you, everybody who put together this comic book. That's Jack Kirby's place, man. Anyway... Crows up on top and whatnot. And those are clearly like ravens and crows and whatnot. And some some hot chick, you know, sitting there eating a full meal. And Bruce, th this was kind of weird, but but whatever. I'll tell you because it it's issue number one. There's gonna be some spoilers in here, all right? Just a few spoilers. I'm not gonna go crazy, but I thought it was weird that Bruce fed the dog, even though this chick is clearly eating a full blown meal. You know what I'm saying? It just seems a little weird to me. Like what you. You're Bruce Banner, you don't have a lot of money, you're clearly running from something, and you're going to stop off to feed this chick's dog some of your sandwich that you're paying seven bucks for. Or is it 11? Whatever it was. Yeah, I think it was uh, 11. A lot of money to get a freaking old sandwich, you know? Anyway, it's a dream. So it makes sense. We do things that are stupid in dreams, right? Yeah, I, I can tell you about some of my dumb dreams. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to keep them under wraps for now because you're going to judge me, and it's cool. Anyway, so he's running, but the thing is he's running from the Hulk, and that's the thing that's so strange about it. It's like, dude, you are the Hulk. The Hulk is inside of you. What are you running from? So when you realize that it was just a dream, he wakes up, and and like <laughs> next to the carcass of some, it looks like is that a deer or it's small enough that it actually looks like it's a coyote, which F coyotes eat them all day long. It looks like the Hulk stopped and, and 
found a coyote and just ate it up and then turned back and, you know, rested and turned into Banner. Banner gets up and his, his shoulder is dislocated, probably from the transformation because Hulk doesn't care. And just, he has to, you know, pop it back in and it, ow, it hurts. And man, and, and dude, Nick Klein, if you're seeing this, you are, you are amazing. This one scene where like he's doing this to put his, his, you know, arm back. Right. And he goes and does this. Right. And you're not going to see a lot of fat on me because I may have my Italian midriff here. But up here, I'm a freaking powerhouse. You know what I'm saying? Stuff doesn't move like all that. But he had, e, e. <laughs> he had whatever. It was a lot of flesh. <laughs> all right. It was a lot of flesh. So like he's squeezing this part. You actually see some of the, it looks like a muffin top with the stuff there. And I noticed that and I'm looking at this like, damn, that is really realistic. That looks really good. I was impressed as all hell. This comic book, dude, let's just get into the art right now. Back off. If you come at this art, clearly you need therapy. <laughs> all right? The art in this comic book, if, if, if Howard Philip Lovecraft had an artist making, you know, his weird tales, stories into comic books instead of just, you know, a novel. Like, there wasn't a novel. It was, it was short stories. But if he had an artist working with him, it would be Nick Klein's grandfather. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how good this was. Wow. And wow. This is incredible. Matt Wilson killed it with the colors. He... Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> so that's that's the art. There's the thing on here where he sees, and this is what's, I'm actually not, not even noticing this until the second time. There's a whole thing like, you know, it's your fault, Banner, because they mention at one point later on in the comic book, oh, uh, there was this green door and all this crazy metaphysical stuff because it was, it was in the, the, the preamble here. And... Um, at one point, the Hulk is saying, you know, it's your fault, Banner, like that. He's being chased. It's your fault. Well, in dream, dreams are just manifestations of all the things that we've seen, right? Now, I doubt Hulk stopped off and pulled out a spray can and was, you know, tagging walls was, you know, your fault and stuff like that. But like when Banner's running, and he's like waking up and realizing what, you know, what's going on. He looks over and he sees somebody spray painted your fault in green, and there's a dog there, the same dog that he fed, but in his dreams, right? Sometimes when we're sleeping, we'll like wake up and, you know, not even wake up, but like our eyes will open a little bit, we'll take in something around us. And especially if we're someplace new, our mind doesn't sleep like the rest of us. So it's going to be constantly active and it's trying to make sense out of everything. And without our waking conscious to do that, the subconscious is going to be like, I can figure this out on my own just fine. <laughs> so the Hulk was not saying this stuff is your fault, but I could see how Banner would think it was. Unfortunately, we also have to bring it. And if you like the Donnie Cates Hulk stuff, fine. Maybe these guys, you know, Johnson and Wilson and, and Klein, maybe these guys like the, the, the Donnie Cates stuff also. I don't know. I don't care. I saw the stuff. I saw the first couple of issues. I was getting a lot of traction. This this is just to, to tell you how realistic I am. If I don't like a comic book, I'm not going to read the damn comic book, all right? Or at least I'm not going to read it for long. I'm not going to hate read something. I'm not going to try and gain views off of stuff. I could have had, I'm surprised at how many views I was getting and people asking me to, to keep on reviewing it. Crazy. Nope, sorry. I'm not interested in taking your time just to hate read something. If I don't like something, I just simply don't read it. It's as simple as that. This I really like this a lot. This is the kind of thing that could get me back into the comic books. This is the kind of work right here where I can say, you know what? I think I might actually have a regular series that I'm going to have to start paying attention to again because holy hell, this was really good. I'm talking really good, this issue. When you start to realize all the little tidbits, all the little things, Philip Kennedy Johnson, the, the three-name psychopath, um... This guy, he he really thought this out. It was like it was like he was waiting and waiting 
for somebody to die or something, somebody get arrested, right? Try to plant evidence or something so that people get arrested so that they'd be off the Hulk comic book so he could jump on and be like, aha, I'm right Hulk. Now what, my fat heads? He finally got his wish. This is clearly what he was built to do. This is an incredible book. It's kind of weird seeing this chick. Let, there's some things that we just don't understand. I'm sure there's things that I say that somebody else who's an expert in something is just going to be like, Bill has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> I have a rudimentary knowledge of a lot of things, but I'm not an expert in everything. I can't be, right? I don't think any of us can be. But like when it comes to fighting, I am absolutely an expert. I've been doing it since I was eight. Well, training in the martial arts since I was eight. Yes, I understand intimately well what hurts, what doesn't hurt, how to hurt, how to not hurt, right? I understand all about it. So when I'm looking at this, I'm going to give you guys an example from um, a couple years ago. This this little girl who had been beaten up by her dad a lot, like her face is all busted up and everything, um, bleeding from the nose, like dad is just a drunk. Um, she went out and with her friend. She was fixing her dad's car, which is technically her grandmother's car, fixing up to make it work so she could drive away. It's kind of weird, kind of rushed, because there's plenty of ways to run away from home without a car. I'm just, I'm saying, I'm just saying. Hey, so like, does she have a thumb? Like, there, there are plenty of ways to, to, to get out, right? Anyway, uh, but not everybody knows that, and not everybody knows about the women's shelters, the lots and lots and lots of women's shelters to get away from abusive homes, right? Um... What's interesting to me is that when she finally had a chance, to, like, like she would say things like, you know, I'm gonna, one of these days I'm going to be bigger and stronger than you. Why would, I don't understand this, why would a girl think that she's ever going to be bigger than a man? That's, that's a strange kind of thing for me. That was a little bit weird. It makes me start to think, you know, the whole Hollywood thing where it's like, boys and girls are the same. Except, you know, no or not. So that was weird. What's more, I don't know what kind of upbringing she had aside from being beaten up. I don't know her life in school and whatnot, but it's very strange for a girl to punch. And she was punching down, like punching. Her knuckles were red and everything. And it's not an anger thing. Like, again, guys, I, I don't know what to tell you, all right? Unless you're a freaking six-year cage fighter or something like that, you're probably not going to know more than me. There's always going to be some nerd out there who's going to be like, well, actually, shut up. How about that? Start by shutting up, all right? Nobody does that. Nobody does that. As much as I used to fight, as quick as I am to get pissed off at somebody and fight somebody... I am not going to, not for long at least, I am not going to start punching down like that. I'll have an open hand, just like when girls fight a lot of times, even if it's street fighting or something like that. Grab you by the hair, pull you, and start hitting you like this. Sometimes start punching you too, but they start doing one of these things because they think that it's going to protect their, their wrist and whatnot. For a little while until all of a sudden you get your, your crap dislocated. But <laughs> I get it. I see it. I see this stuff, right? It's usually open hand. You know what I'm saying? Even when somebody, a man doesn't know how to fight, a lot of times he'll do this. He'll do one of these because he's, which is perfectly fine, actually. Because you're less likely, you're more likely to break this than you are, how many, what was it, like 16 bones just in this area right here. 16 bones as opposed to breaking your metacarpal, <laughs> the pinky one, most likely this one twice I broke, right? Good solid chance of, of busting yourself up. Punching down like that? No. And and girls, like, look, I remember <laughs> I got a kid kicked out of school. I got a kid kicked out of um, my oldest son's uh, senior kindergarten class. No, junior. It was his junior kindergarten class. Here in Canada, there's level one and level two kindergarten. Then you go to first grade and so on. Anyway, um, so he was in kindergarten, junior kindergarten, his first year uh, at four years old. And this, I kept on getting reports of this one kid bullying my son. I'm like, man, I haven't gotten him into jujitsu and karate and judo and all this stuff. He still haven't gotten into judo, but the other ones he's already in and he's doing great, right? Um, Freaking, this one kid is bullying my son. 
I hear this all the time. I keep on hearing about him. I'm like, all right, it's cool. It's good for him. You know, whatever. He'll, you know, he'll eventually learn how to fight back, get a little aggression, whatever. Then I hear the, the, the teacher goes and tells me, oh, uh, yeah, this kid actually punched, you know, your, your son in the stomach. I'm like, that's weird. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get your language correct. Punched him? Yeah, punched him. Just look, I know I'm going to go over this a couple times. I want to make absolutely sure you're saying close hand, not hit him, not karate chop, not, you know, whatever. He actually closed his fingers together, wrapped his thumb around, or sometimes, you know, kids, they'll do this. They think that's somehow better. That's a great way to blow your thumb out. But, you know, he closed his fist like this and uppercut punched him in the stomach. It's like, yeah. Huh. And you're sure, like, you watched this happen. Yeah. Uh, I sent him to the principal's office. It's like, I'm afraid that's not going to be enough, and I think this is the last time that you and I are going to have conversations about this boy attacking my son. I'm going to actually go to the authorities at this point. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, 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 what's going on? I'm like, I'm not, he thought he was in trouble. Like, I don't think you understand. I'm not going to say this teacher's name. Like, I don't think you understand, bud. This kid's four years old. And somehow he knows, like, does that seem to you, does that seem natural to roll up your fist? to Like, it's not natural to do this. This is something that as you get older, experience, training, you start to realize you can ball up because there's, now you're forcing a little bit more gravity in there, right? You know, it makes some density to, you know, actually, boom, something heavy, almost like picking up a club, but not, right? A slap is going to sting. A punch, you're balling up and putting muscular trend. There's a huge difference. The only way this four-year-old kid could have possibly done this is if someone in his family, someone close to him, taught him how to do it or is doing it to him and he's learning that way. And that's what I think is happening. And that would explain the bullying because this kid is simply repeating behavior that he sees done to him. It's like, oh, I, I never thought about that way. I was like, well, you have all the time you want to think about it. Like I said, I'm going to the authorities about this. And I did. <laughs> and that kid was taken out of school the very next day. I don't know what happened to the kid. I don't know what happened to whoever was in his life. But I genuinely hope that something got fixed. I really do. I hope this kid's not going to just get lost in the system or something like that, you know? Be a hell of a story to tell, right? If any aspiring short story or novelists out there. But either way, it is not natural to do this. It's not that's not the way that it works. So anyway, um, aside from all this stuff and the fact that this girl was just way too aggressive, she had some kind of demon in her. Uh, she had, in my opinion, she had to have because they brought up a whole bunch of other demons in here, monsters and whatnot. They brought up the Moloids at one point. Uh, they brought up the what the hell else was that? I'm trying to get down to this, this one picture of the Hulk, where he says, "Leave me alone," standing over this one FBI agent. That was just impressive as all hell. That was just crazy. I loved that. Wow. Um, all these people, the, the dude with the red eye. Yeah, a lot of crazy stuff going on. So what is this crap? The firstborn, this is the chick who turned her head. She's rising up the Moloids, which are the Mole Man's um, minions from the Fantastic Four comics. There's the man thing out here. Um... There is, oh, this is uh, Johnny Blaze, which I thought was kind of interesting. This is the Johnny Blaze version of Ghost Rider. Maybe they're going to do an older version, which I'd be okay with that also. But either way, so this, is this, the, they say the mother of all monsters, I think she was called? Really weird. Breaking the mother of horrors. That's interesting, especially when you're, like, you're summoning Zarathos. Like Mephisto himself. Mephisto, who, mind you, is a direct descendant of the elder gods, the greater gods out there. So I want you to stop and think about this. When you talk about the greater gods, you're talking about the great old ones, okay? And when you talk about H.P. Lovecraft and whatnot, if I remember correctly, uh, Dagon is a great old one. He's one of the senior elder original gods. Like, he's in the Bible. That's where H.P. Lovecraft got him from, Dagon, the name. So Dagon, like, boom. And Cthulhu is lesser than Dagon. 
And these two war with you like Dagon hates Cthulhu, right? But Cthulhu is not technically a great old one. He's not one of the elder ones like all that, right? He's a lesser one. So the fact that Mephisto feared Zarathos and had to trick him, doesn't want to get into a physical confrontation with him if he can avoid it, right? And this chick is just able to bring him up. Like, that's, that's, I don't know. I don't know if I, if I like that very much. But we'll see where this goes. We'll see what happens. It is going to be great to actually see some of these creatures being used, right? I'm kind of digging on this. At the end, the Hulk meets up with this little girl. We'll see exactly what, where it goes from here, all right? Anyway, guys, I genuinely liked this comic book. I can't wait to read the next issue. Like, if this is going to be a monthly comic book, I... Cool. I wonder if I can get them delivered. I'm a busy guy. <laughs> but I am really enjoying this. I, like, I might actually go out and start getting physical copies of this because that's how good this is. Remember when I used to always have physical copies? Everybody else would be digital. They'd be stealing comic books from online and whatnot, right? Because you know Marvel's not sending these guys their comic books, right? So... It was, it was kind of weird, kind of weird, but I used to always have the physical copies. Just be like, ah, I love these things. I might actually start getting physical copies of this. That's how damn good this comic book is. When you see something you like, support it. it it's just like a vote. Every single vote counts. You vote with your dollars. Vote on this comic book. Keep it good because I really like where this is potentially going couple little things that are a little bit, you know, eh, iffy, but I like where this is potentially going. Guys, like the video, watch an ad, and consider voting for this comic book with your dollars also. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.